would like to thank uh, the, my panel members for being here and being the great support for Merck More Than a Mother campaign. And uh, a lot of you might ask, what is Merck More Than a Mother campaign? It is an initiative being uh, introduced to first Africa and now in Asia to empower infertile women through access to information, health, change of mindset and economic empowerment. As we all might know that in many cultures in Africa and developing countries, infertile women, women who couldn't have children, uh, they always subject for uh, discrimination, ostracization, stigmatized, and also most of the cases subject to physical and psychological violence. And uh, you might even not believe or imagine that this could happen in the 21st century, but still it's happening in rural areas and, and many of the areas. And that's why we are all here. Uh, very important people who had dedicated their agenda and their time to uh, uh, this cause and rally behind this cause and be ambassadors for this campaign. Uh, women and men, as you see, to make a change, to change the culture, to empower these women, to also build a capacity in fertility care because you know that some countries till now they don't have even one, one fertility uh, specialist who can even intervene with a small uh, intervention of management of a course of antibiotic or a, a, a small uh, course of tablets to treat an infertile couple uh, uh, who can have a chance to uh, overcome the social and uh, stigma of, infer of infertility. So we are training there the first fertility specialist in these countries like Sierra Leone, like Liberia, like Guinea, Gambia, uh, and uh, many other countries, I cannot remember them now. But these are countries we are making history there through Merck Foundation, which is the foundation who initiated this campaign and the foundation which is the philanthropic arm of Merck. So uh, I would like to speak about this step by step because it's overwhelming uh, information. Uh, but let us start first to give you just a small idea what is happening and what we're talking about and why this campaign is very critical for Africa and developing countries. So I would like now uh, uh, to uh, uh, go through uh, the, uh, my uh, prestigious panelists here and ask them uh, questions. F from these answers you will understand what Merck More Than a Mother done and will do in Africa. I will start with the first country we launched the Merck More Than a Mother campaign in, which is Uganda. Honorable Minister Sarah Obindi, the Minister of State of Health, and how uh, with her dynamic and passion uh, towards the cause uh, made a change in, in, in Uganda with thousands of women we empowered through also Merck More Than a Mother and also the training and the first IVF in public sector in Uganda. Thank you very much, Dr. Russia Kellege, and thank you for inviting us to this very important meeting. I must really say that um, although infertility has existed for a very long time, our government, the government of Uganda, just like most governments in Africa, have not paid attention to issues around infertility. And it had not even occurred to me that this was a big problem until I got involved in this campaign. When Dr. Russia, who were working with Mark on issues around cancer and diabetes awareness, then she introduced this subject to me. It took me close over six months to really appreciate that this was a problem. And when I reflected deeply on the issue, then I discovered that this was a big problem in my country, but nobody had ever talked about it. And therefore, we had to break the silence in 2016 by launching the campaign against infertility. And you cannot believe the thousands and thousands of people who have now come up to speak about their own story. But also, what I appreciate is that men have also come in to actually acknowledge that the problem is not that of women. Because in African settings, when a couple fails to find or get a child, or the woman fails to conceive, she's actually the one that has always been blamed, and even up to now. 
you can see Jacqueline's case. It's just one example. There are so many stories um, that we have come across, not only in Uganda, but beyond even Uganda. So I want to thank Mark because as a result of this campaign, uh, the government of Uganda, we've been having pub private health facilities. Actually, there are now six offering fertility care services. But this was limited in the capital city of Uganda. And not only limited in the capital city, but only very expensive that an ordinary person cannot actually afford the services at these fertility care centers. You need maybe 5,000 or more dollars to be able to access services. And of course, you must travel to the capital city to have this service. So I want to appreciate that through this effort, we started the campaign, we broke the silence, we have been speaking, and for the very first time, the government of Uganda, although we are constructing a women's, a 455 state-of-the-art women's hospital, we had not thought much about talking about issues around fertility. So I'm glad that this women's hospital that the government of Uganda is putting up, actually it's now ready, will be commissioned any time uh, this year, maybe by May. And this hospital will be the first public facility that will be offering uh, the IVF services and fertility care services in the country. Of course, we are... This is a big boost for us as the government of Uganda to be able to support couples that have challenges and cannot have children, and most importantly, they cannot afford the services in the private healthcare facilities. We are yet to agree, aware that the cost is quite high on the actual cost that it will, some people, the people affected will have to pay some little money, but we are still trying to, 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 to reduce and find uh, something that is affordable. But also most importantly, I want to thank Mark because we have been able with their support to raise awareness in the countryside, move to the different districts in the country, but also, most importantly, they have trained for us embryologists who we did not have in the public sector before. So thank you, Mark, for this. And we believe that with this support, we should be able to move forward. The other issue that, as a government, we are doing is that although fertility care services have been there in the private clinics, it, it is an area that has, been, it has not been regulated before. So as we speak now, we already have a draft law, and we hope that this will also be passed soon so that we can have this sector also regulated. And of course, the other most important thing, with our support from our partners, we're going to have the very first data registry that will also help us to know um, the magnitude of the problem because now we are working on estimates, and estimates are sometimes not good for planning purposes. So when we have this data registry up and running, we hope that this central registry will help inform policy and also help us in budgeting for the necessary services in the country. Thank, Thank you, you very, much. very, very much. And I emphasize, of course, the regulation is very important. That's why we are partnering with all the policymakers to define policies to regulate uh, infertility, IVF, donation, surrogacy, all the aspects of infertility treatment, which was not and uh, never existed in many, many countries in Africa. And also, of course, the data uh, uh, collection, because it's very important. And until now, we know that in Africa and developing countries, uh, one couple, every four couples are infertile, which is a very, very high uh, incidence, uh, which is by the WHO data basis. And out of these, 85% more or less can be prevented because it's due to untreated infectious diseases. Infectious diseases due to uh, child marriage, uh, genital mutation, unsafe abortion, unsafe delivery. And that's why also raising awareness about prevention in Africa is very, very important. I will go now from Uganda to uh, the, the, the country which we are going to launch uh, in May. Uh, so it will be the recent country we launched Merck more than a mother, Namibia. And of course, with Honorable Margaret, the chairperson uh, of uh, National Assembly of uh, Namibia. Uh, she's also the ambassador of Merck more than a mother, like uh, um, uh, Minister Sarah Obindi, also the ambassador of Merck more than a mother. And she will talk to us about what we are going to do in Namibia together and what is her plans. I'm very happy to state that 
I became involved last year and we decided that there should be a launch and we should advocate and give information in Namibia because we know that uh, infertil the infertility rate, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, is very high. And Namibia being part of Sub-Saharan Africa, specifically in Southern Africa, and in Namibia, you have like 32% of people who are inf infertile. It's like one third of the couples. And this is just on couples. It's not on young people who should have early detection and have prevention. So it is something that is not really spoken about. And as they are saying, it's like we have an infertility belt wrapped around us, you know, as, as a country and as a region. And that the rate is maybe higher than what we think it is. And uh, we should, with milk more than a mother, create, first of all, the information should be made available. People should become aware. We should advocate. And that's why in, Ma in May, we are going to launch Merck More Than a Mother. Because you have a lot of, and specifically in certain tribes, it's higher. And in those tribes, it's even where we have um, the traditional norms that is so high that you have to educate people. So a lot of advocacy have to go in. Now on one hand, we have infertile people, uh, women and men. On the other hand, we have homelessness of those who can produce, but those children are dumped. So in order to strike the balance, we are going to bring women from all 14 regions of the country and men and they are going to come together with members of parliament who are making the laws because currently we have a private infertility clinic that started which is one of the very expensive hospitals that's offering it and people cannot afford it's unaffordable but except that in the african culture uh, and let me say in the black african culture we don't speak about these things because it's a scandal for a woman to be barren. And they will just say childlessness. They will refer to it in Namibia when the study was done in 2013. But it's more than, you know, being childless. It's like Merck say more than a mother. And I think the, the, the onus is upon us as the ambassadors to ensure that these issues, just like we watched the video and we saw how the impact of bringing back the dignity of that woman changed her whole life. So we can prevent this. We should spread the information. We should make provision for fertility clinics. We have a lot of cancer cases in Namibia. And that could be linked. So nobody have really come up to say, let's also budget appropriately. And now we are going to have a joint budget committee in Parliament of Namibia. And that joint budget committee will be in a position to look into, and we are going to have gender responsive budgeting. And that's going to assist us to provide for these women and men and there are many women who are suffering but they are suffering in silence and we have just concentrated on hiv and aids we are saying we have too many children in africa we are poor and therefore people should not have children but we did not really get into the depth of why are people as they call it childless what is this infertility? How can it be prevented? How can people make use of clinics? How can we come up with projects? How can we come up with clinics? And I have one example. I spoke to my 25-year-old uh, niece, and I told her, do some research. The next day, she came back to me. She said, you know, I see that 
uh, when people are getting married and when they want to have children, it's the time that people now wants to plan to have children. And that might be too late. So I'm at the age where I have not decided to get married. I'm still single. But it just struck me when I read through this and I played the video that, that Russia sent me from Merck More Than A Mother. And she said it just struck her that I should go for testing. See, that is just one, one of the people I spoke to. And then she said, it never dawned on me that this is a very important issue. And that's preventable because she said, and you know, that's maybe why my sister is trying to have a baby with her husband and they can't. And she's over 30. Now, I spoke to her. So that is just my family members. But there are lots of people out there, specifically in the rural areas, where it's a taboo culturally to talk about these issues. So we have to shake. We have to shake our communities and shape them in making use of the medical provisions which are there and how we as leaders can take part, part in changing, not also just looking at the negative, but how we can positively change. So I'm really looking forward to the launch and I'm sure you are looking forward to the launch, Russia, because we are going to make it something that should, and, and when we discussed it, I said to her, we are going to attract the attention of this community, Namibia. And we are going to make sure that we bring in the homeless people in there so that they can speak also of what they are going through, the integrity of them, the humanity that was touched, so that these women and men who are suffering from infertility and can be treated can come out and speak so that the relevance of the two can be seen because in africa we were laughing this morning with uh, one of my colleagues and i said to her you know what uh, we are drama queens and i know me and my sister having west african blood we are drama queens so there are drama kings also let's use them to get the message across. Yes, Thank definitely. you very much. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. And it's really important, like you said, to attract the attention of the community and most importantly, the youth. The youth is very important because this is the future and they can make a change. That's why we integrated in our campaign two important partners, media and art. So we have the Media Recognition Award for Merck More Than a Mother, where we encourage all the journalists, so started in East Africa, uh, uh, all the journalists to write stories about infertile women and their suffering, TV, radio, print, and online. Four categories of media recognition. Now, we, of course, we educated them through the announcement, what is infertility, guide them to our social media to see the films and the videos and the stories. And they came up with fantastic, fantastic, really, uh, uh, articles uh, to, to, to apply. And with, we are going to announce the winner very soon. And then, only then, in Kenya, for the first time, they included IVF in the medical the national insurance for government official because a lot of people came up they read about it many many times and it was mainly uh, announced in in in, uh, in kenya and then we in sierra leone we found a very important artist which is a singer and we made a very nice song called merk more than a mother telling a story in a video clip about infertility and what happened and you can see it in our social media where also we have minister of health uh, of Sierra Leone with us, uh, Honorable uh, Zulika Kuber, and uh, we also trained the first two fertility specialists in Sierra Leone. This is going to be the first time couples in Sierra Leone will be treated and be able to be treated in their home country. So I will, I will give you the uh, uh, floor to tell us about this exper experience. Mark more than a mother. Thank you once more for inviting me into your family. When we started in Sarai Neon, 
we thought it was just um, stigmatization about women not having children, but it's also about women having just girl children. That's the surprising thing that came out of the whole exercise. Men keep marrying two, three wives because the first wife can only produce girls. I'm not realizing that we as women are really not responsible for the sex of a child. That's another stigma stigmatization. Thank you again for the training of our um, young Dr. Sulaiman Conte. He couldn't wait. So what he's doing now from his experience, when he sees these young women, he actually talks to the gynecologist. X amount of women have been married for three, four years. The marriage is on the brink of breaking up. Why don't we do some tests? And it is surprisingly surprising to me that a simple UA, CNS, blood culture, can actually tell you that there is some kind of infection going on. So we haven't started the, the, the clinic yet, but we've started the treatment. We're building um, a, a, a new hospital. We've already provided the space for the IVF clinic. We are training the women in the rural areas on um, cleanliness, you know, genital cleanliness, because when you're ready to go to the farm, you feel like easing yourself, you find the nearest bush, it's common. You do what you have to do, you get up. If it's something else, you use leaves, that's how you get infection. We're actually doing that training. And as far as I'm concerned, it's all part of what Mac More Than A Mother is talking about. The data collection, we started it already. And in the urban areas, it happens also. It is there. People just don't want to come forward. But now we have men coming to my office with their wives and asking, what can we do? You're lucky. For us in Sarai Dion, it costs a lot of money because you have to look into the transportation, how much it takes for you to pay to find a clinic outside Sarai Dion. And um, I can't wait for us to launch this. I cannot. It's, it's my baby with your permission. It's our baby, and it's going to happen in Sarai Dion. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We're relying on you. Thank you very, very, very much. And of course, I, I would like to uh, give the floor now to uh, Honorable Dr. Uh, uh, Shilufa, who is the Minister of Health of Republic of Namibia, where we are going to discuss the, the Namibia, Zambia, sorry, of Zambia, sorry, the Republic of Zambia, of course, uh, where we are going to discuss after this panel the launch uh, of Merck More Than a Mother in uh, Zambia. And also, we are going to put a strategy for how to build capacity of, of fertility care in Zambia. Knowing that we are partners already in building capacity in cancer, we have started already to train a lot of doctors, uh, oncologists in uh, India from, from Zambia. So I, I would like, uh, Honorable Minister, I would like to uh, give you the floor to discuss what we are going to do in Zambia and what do you think as a man and politician and a very important leader in your country about this problem. Thank you very much indeed, um, uh, Dr. Rasha, and uh, distinguished panelists and uh, delegates. Good morning. Uh, in Zambia, first of all, the tradition, uh, the normal practice we see is uh, women talking about infertility. And uh, it's good that we have now men talking about infertility. Now, infertility is a public health challenge in Zambia, and it's understated. If you look at the statistics, you hear of 1.1 to 2% of women being infertile, or of the population being infertile. But 10 to 15% of all outpatient attendances in our gynae clinics 
uh, is about infertility. So this is a huge problem. It poses both social, cultural, and emotional challenges. Marriage in Zambia is, a, is an institution to have children. And if you don't have children, it becomes a big problem. And there will be gender-based violence. There will be abuse. When your male partner dies and uh, you, you know, no children are born, the relatives will grab the, the property and say, you've got no children to, to look after. So males will get extramarital affairs, posing another risk of transmission of sexually transmitted illnesses, HIV and other STIs, in the quest to have children. And the assumption is always that the woman is the one who is infertile. Now to aggravate the problem, we do not have adequate infrastructure and equipment and human capital to actually investigate and diagnose infertility. Yes, we are aware of the common causes in females, PIDs, STIs, regular and uh, you know untreated tubal blockage. We know, but investigations have been very limited. Even in males, investigations are very limited. So, what is the way forward? The way forward is ensuring that our universal health coverage agenda includes health system strengthening to cover all the variables that will include addressing infertility, reproductive health services comprehensively. We must invest in infrastructure for reproductive health services, including infertility. We must invest in the human capital required to manage infertility. We must invest we must invest in resilient systems to ensure that all citizens access health services, including infertility uh, services. We want to thank Make Foundation for partnering with Zambia in various aspects of health systems, including oncology and surgical training, which is part of the broad agenda for human capital development. And now we're looking forward to this new partnership, which will focus on infertility. Now, women deserve more respect than being the culprits whenever there is an issue of infertility. And in Zambia, we are going to ensure that even legislation is addressed to ensure that the negative aspects of infertility are addressed and to ensure that our people access comprehensive reproductive health services, including infertility. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Honorable Minister. So can I ask you now, as a being a man and a minister of health, can you be also the ambassador of America More Than a Mother in Zambia? I am the ambassador of Make More Than a Mother yes, for yes. infertility, <laughs> yes. Thank you very, very, very much. It's a great honor. It's a great honor and it will add a great value to our, our objective and our goals. Thank you very much. My next question will go to Dr. Latundi, who is the president of uh, uh, um, the Giraffe uh, Society for the Francophone African countries. It is very important for me because we want to uh, scale up the uh, campaign to Francophone countries. Uh, because there is too many countries still, we're going to make a history there, like Niger and Chad, there is no fertility specialist still today. And uh, it's very important for us to have also from your experience what you have done in the building capacity and to talk about the training we are going to provide for the giraffe doctors to improve access to uh, fertility care in, uh, in Africa. Et le giraffe a fait beaucoup d'études sur l'infertilité en Afrique. Et ça a été publié dans le journal Hormones et Reproduction en 2013. Nous avons fait aussi des études sur l'infertilité masculine, ce qui nous a permis de, de, de permettre, ce qui nous a permis que les hommes aujourd'hui viennent consulter avec les épouses parce qu'ils ont pris conscience que l'infertilité du couple est un problème de l'homme et de la femme. Notre collaboration avec MERS a commencé en 2015. La session Excellence Académique, qui est la mise au, les mises, la mise au point, sur les nouvelles technologies en infertilité. Il y a aussi la formation des formateurs. Aujourd'hui, il y a MEC Foundation qui nous aide, la formation des embryologistes et des cliniciens, près de 30 personnes qui doivent être formées sur l'infertilité et l'AMP. 
Et nous sommes les porte-parole. Nous sommes les porte-parole de l'infertilité en Afrique et nous remercions. Je profite de l'occasion pour remercier mes fonctions qui nous permet de, déma, de, de dramatiser l'infertilité en Afrique. Je vous remercie. Thank you very, very, very much. Just to thank you very much. Just to differentiate, Merck Foundation will focus on uh, training the doctors who can provide access to patients who cannot afford, patients in the rural areas. We're not going to focus very much on high tech end at the moment, but actually I want to focus mainly to uh, even, even the basic fertility uh, 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 training to reach everywhere. So uh, I know there is going to be a very sophisticated one or two IVF center in the capitals of each country, but my focus will be on more fertility doctors who can go around the country or even to be in the public sector in the capital to provide a very affordable, equitable and uh, cost-effective solutions for uh, 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 couples who cannot have children. And uh, of course, because being as a foundation, a non-for-profit organization, this is our main focus and our, our vision. You can just... Donc, le Dr. Rasha A. Antrilli dit que le point focal présentement, ce n'est pas dans la création des centres de vie des hautes technologies. Donc, le point focal, d'abord, c'est de former les candidats qui seront à mesure de prendre en charge l'infertilité avec des mesures basiques et qui pourront également aller dans les régions rurales où il y a les paysans pour mettre en place ces services. Mais bon, j'ai omis de vous dire que chaque pays a un point focal et so, ils utilisent par exemple les radios, les télés et ils vont dans les villages pour transmettre les informations sur la fertilité I want et you pour to know that every country have a focal point which they use to raise this awareness through radio, televisions, and newspapers. Great, fantastic, this is great. So thank you very, very much, Dr. Latonji, and that will be a great uh, partnership and uh, scaling up to more countries in Africa, and this is our uh, main focus. I will take uh, my question to, to Professor Joe Simpson, who is the past president of Interf National Federation IF IIFF. IFFS, International Federation of Fertility Societies. So to give us uh, also, uh, you have been with us from the beginning of the journey and you have seen the training and I want you to focus mainly on, on, on the benefit of uh, building capacity in fertility care in Africa, especially in the countries we are approaching for the first time. Thank you very much, Rasha. Uh, this has indeed been a meaningful uh, component of my career to work with uh, Burke more than a mother and to see your uh, increasing uh, in, uh, involvement and leadership in this role. It's made a, a huge uh, difference in terms of uh, where we are in this area. Uh, all of us as healthcare providers get into this field because we want to help people. <clears throat> I don't think it's possible to go through medical school, nursing school, public health school without understanding this and feeling this uh, in your heart and in your bones. And it, during this stretch, we see a lot of mentors. We see people that teach us to do surgery. We uh, are come in contact with people who teach us the diagnosticians, administrators, to make sure that we move forward in this particular area. But very, very frequently, we are frustrated because we uh, run into a roadblock Sometimes it's a roadblock that's obvious because there's simply no resources to do what we think needs to be done. Sometimes the patients appear to be uh, less than happy about following what we think is advice that they should be doing. So I want everyone in this audience to appreciate that why the Merck program works is that Rasha and her team have looked at all the mentors that we need. And you see examples of this around the table. We see uh, individuals who have benefited from the fact that the victims of infertility, you know, the video clip that we saw, uh, have been helped. They have not forgotten. You could not leave them out in good faith and move forward with the advances that we're talking about at a scientific level. They have addressed that. <clears throat> we have to have politicians 
we have to have politicians who have actually done something, not just talked about something, but actually done something in the legislature. And we have examples of that here, and we certainly have had other examples in other forums that Russia has put on that has brought that. We could fill up this uh, edge of the uh, auditorium with individuals that have done that. And Merck, more than a mother program, has also realized that we need to provide sustaining health care facilities to access. It's one thing to have someone coming in and starting an in vitro fertilization unit, but is so thinly staffed that the departure of a single individual, you know, essentially bankrupts literally and morally that particular operation. So I congratulate Russia and the world congratulates Russia because we look back and we see <coughs> And we see that all of the components are in place, you know, and we started this meeting the first day with a, uh, a homage to what has been done with FIGO and its increasing capacity for fistula. So FIGO from as long as Professor Shiro and I can remember has been pushing for, uh, fistula research and fistula surgery and fist fistula access. And you saw the 6,000 cases that had been done, which represented a remarkable increase in terms of the care that's there. A lot, a lot to do, still only one in 50 women who need it get the surgery, and we are still in the situation with infertility. But there's been a remarkable increase and a sustained increase that we can be confident that's occurring. I'd like to go so far as to say this is a paradigm for a public-private uh, partnership. This is what should be done. It should not be focused on a single small component. It should be focused on the broader area from the patients to the future. And uh, I think you see what uh, we need to be doing in medicine to advocate this sort of relationship with our private partners and also how we need to react both to those that are left behind as well as the media to involve what's being done in the future. So I think we've turned the counter Russia uh, and, and fellow politicians around the room, around the table. I admire what you're doing. The world admires what you're doing. Let's keep it up. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you very, very much. I will never be able to do anything without support of the people you see with me here on, on, on the panel. And I really appreciate and acknowledge that very, very much. Uh, I will, uh, last but not least, Professor Ashiro, the president of Africa Fertility Society and also our partner from the start. And he understand, as uh, Professor Simpson, very much what exactly uh, uh, Merck Foundation aim and objective and vision to improve access, cost effective, to cost effective, regulated and safe fertility care in the places and underserved community and the community who is needed to, uh, to um, um, change a culture, raise awareness, and uh, uh, manage their uh, prevention and, and uh, fertility condition. Thank you, Russia. <clears throat> it's a pleasure to be here. And if you understand the, the history of infertility in Africa and my experience, you'll understand what I mean. When I finished my training in the US, 1979, I was given an opportunity to stay there and continue to work. But I realized that there was more need for my people in Nigeria. Then I, I I applied for a grant because that was the time they started their test tube, baby, Stepto and Edwards had just completed their work. So I said, I wanted to do this in Nigeria for Africa. The head of the research in the Rockefeller told me that they, there's not going to fund any research for infertility 
in Africa so I should forget it. But what I should do is research in family planning in Africa. So I, of course, I wrote the grant and I got the grant for family planning research. I was meant, I did study uh, how to get male contraceptives in, in, done through experimental work. But the same infrastructure that I was given enabled me to start IVF in Nigeria. And that was what was used. But what is the value of this? And what is the value of what Mac Foundation is doing? Is that there is no sin greater than ignorance. The ignorance of our people in Africa is such that when people are infertile, they don't want to talk about it because they think it's a personal matter and they are alone. I thank Russia because through their, their foundation, they have opened the gate to many people to know that they are not alone in this matter. And the way it has been done, because I think when Russia came to Nigeria as Mark more than a mother, if they came just as Mark more than a mother and they came to a meeting, nobody would notice them. You see, here today, if the, uh, the, the Sultan of Dubai, I don't know, was sitting here, this hall would be what? It would be full. So in Nigeria, she got the, the wife of the president. And because she was there, all the other wives of governors were there. And today, it is now a, a common feature that we now know in Nigeria that a woman got her hand amputated because of infertility when he was the husband. And men now knowing that there is treatment for infertility when it is their fault are now coming forward to have infertility treatment. I must conclude my talk by saying that it is not peculiar to Africa. It is all over the world. And that there are even several other events of ignorance. Today in Nigeria, because we have the ability to run pre-implantation genetic testing for sex, men now realize that if their wife does not have a boy, they don't need to go and start looking for other women. It is their fault because they are not providing the Y to make the X, Y. So there are other forms of ignorance that must end up in this place. That infertility, almost 95% are preventable. Sexually transmitted disease, number one. Number two, which is unsaid, the environment. The environment is creating a lot of toxins affecting infertility. Starting from pesticides, from paint in your place, or even some of the food that you eat, like large fish that contains mercury. These are things that are toxic to people. So I thank uh, Mark Foundation for giving this opportunity and for even now going into the social information to inform people about preventing infertility and also saying that womanhood is greater than motherhood. In other words, it doesn't matter. A woman can still achieve many things even without a baby. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much, Professor Ashiro. I would like to uh, open the floor for questions and, uh, and answers from the panelists. If you have any question, please, we, we have the mics. Anyone, any question? Uh, Najm Sama from Afghanistan. As 
As we saw uh, Jacqueline's uh, story, it was very uh, terrible, and we have many, many such cases in Afghanistan. What can Merck do for Afghanistan establishing IVF center? Uh, we can train, uh, uh, we, we don't establish any infrastructure because it's not in our vision, our objectives, but we can train uh, uh, personnel. So if you can have, uh, uh, you go to our website and you see the contact or you get a contact from, from my team here, and then you can send me what exactly needed uh, to be done uh, for training. And what is the plan? Of course, we prefer that the IVF center we establish by the government so they can maintain it and take care of it. So it's a sustainability purpose, okay? And it doesn't cost so much if you want. Uh, IVF center can cost $300,000 if, uh, uh, you know, we don't, you don't have this high-tech things, you know? You don't have to have this. You can have a, a, a very cost-effective uh, IVF center and we can train all this, uh, the, the, uh, the personnel, definitely. Any other question? Yes, here. Thank you very much, Thank you. Merck, for these uh, initiatives. You. Actually, I'm from Egypt. I... You know, Egypt is an African country. Of course. And we have a very good infrastructure. And may I assume that we are the cheapest country to offer these IVF programs. Training, so, you mean? With the training or the service itself, yeah. as regards the service, the, the whole cycle, including the drugs in Egypt, may cost less than one, uh, $1,000 or less. Uh, and actually, we, are, we, we, we have many governmental centers. Yeah. We have in Alexandria University and uh, IVF Center in Cairo University, everywhere. So I think we can work with Merck yes, uh, more definitely. than a mother foundation to help our neighbors in Africa for yes. whether the training or the service. So we itself. can connect being also I'm from Egypt, so actually so <laughs> so we can connect maybe this is a really good opportunity also for training and also until the capacity built in many countries. Instead of referring the patients to different countries, we can refer to Egypt is even easier, faster and, and quicker. Yeah. Hi, my name is Femi Ogunlewe. I'm from Canada. Yes. Um, I'm going in the other direction. Yes, you've spoken about the education. Uh, I think there's an emphasis on IVF. IVF, 20 to 25% take home baby rate at best. Is it an overemphasis? I don't know. But the question, and something that also applies to Africa, is this. Is there any advocacy for adoptions? Are we even talking about it? I think we have many children in Africa that are unfounded, are on, uh, not taken care of, uh, but we don't even talk about adoption in Africa. Adoption? That's another taboo. Yes, adoption. Definitely, definitely. definitely. So is, is this something Merck is hoping to address in the future? Uh, because yes. Uh, look, I mean, we are not going to uh, uh, address adoption and surrogacy and don donation. It's all under one policy, which is uh, fertility uh, or ART policy. It's different from country to country due to, you know, uh, many uh, aspects, cultures. But of course, uh, uh, it is part of the policy. So we only advocate, advocate for a policy in the parliament. It usually includes adoption, surrogacy, and other, other things. And of course, uh, this is different than the culture, cultural uh, perce perception, of course, of, uh, of things. But, but it is uh, a point, yes. We address, but you know what? Before I, I, I want yes, I want to address first the fertility itself, the fertility management before even go to the adoption, because you cannot just go to, uh, uh, for example, um, let's say what, uh, buy the chair before you have the house, you know, or buy the 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 the, the furniture before there is a house. So we are, we want to build the house first, and then we can address different points. Separately. Hi, um, my question now is, you know, you've start, Merck Foundation began the project, the program in Africa. Now, is there a timeline? May we know if it's already in the pipeline that you're going to get inside other developing countries? Yes. Um, when is this going to be? And May I get, you know, I just wanted to be clarified that in all of your uh, fertility issues and problems, programs, ongoing throughout Africa, it's, um, it's included the, the male infertility problems and issues and concerns and solutions are also into it because 
fifth, globally, we know that 50% exactly. of infertility cases are caused by, by men. men. I'm yes. sorry. Yes. But that, you know all of that. Yes. <laughs> so, that that's my tip. So I just want to be cleared about that. Yes. So, so, you know, it's a win-win solution and both male and female infertility problems and solutions are going to be addressed. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. First of all, we started in Asia already for, in five countries, Cambodia, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and, uh, and uh, yes, and Malaysia and, uh, and Indonesia. So there is too many, actually, up to seven countries in Asia. So they started in different countries. We started already building capacity there, and we have our stories. Today, we, we wanted to focus on Africa because uh, still there is a lot of, of, of countries in Africa has no fertility care and, uh, and this is the, the way we're going to scale up during this six months. But of course, we will continue in Asia. I am hoping to open also in Latin America uh, and launch the campaign, but this will, uh, will require a little bit of more resources and, and team and establish new infrastructure in Latin America. But uh, the focus these two years will be Africa and Asia. Uh, for the male infertility, as we said, I mean, we are advocating every day to uh, uh, encourage men to speak up and discuss openly their fertility by saying it's not a taboo and we address their problems of prevention and management along with prevention and management of infertility in women. So men are included and that's why we're including ambassadors from Merck more than a mother men also to be the role model and to encourage their peers and, and their, their, their fellow men to speak up and to uh, respect their wives and to join the journey. Anyone want to? Can I say my last question, please? I no, I just wanted to add to this because she was asking that focus, are you going to go to all the African or developing countries? I just wanted to state that it's important. Mark cannot just go to a country where there is no support. So the political leadership and the technical people must embrace the program in order for Mark to be able to move forward with this uh, awareness campaign and do um, the capacity building and so on. Thank you. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. Yes. Thank you for the presentation you have put. Thank you very much. And the story which you have highlighted was a shocker to everybody in the country. The interesting thing, and that's why I'm addressing this to Mark, the connection between legislation, health, and politics. We are politicians in the panel. Yes. What happens within most of our communities is that when the man assaults the woman as the wife, really it's considered to be a domestic issue, however serious it is. Yes. How is it that our politicians can be able to enhance legislation so that we get stiffer penalties to the men who are molesting their wives so that we do not have an issue whereby men are considered to be a law unto themselves where the wives are involved, especially when we know majority of these people, the infertility is from the men. We know the African woman is never infertile unless there are issues. Yes. Mostly it is the men component. Thank you. Honorable Minister will, will, uh, will answer your question. Uh, thank you very much. Stiffer penalties, stiffer laws against gender-based violence are very important. And um, it must just be classified as gender-based violence. If you assault a woman because you perceive that she's infertile, that's the highest order of gender-based violence. And stiffer penalties must be put in place. So as legislators, we're putting in place laws that are stiffer against gender-based violence. But we need to talk a lot more so that we raise the level of awareness. But we must also talk about the broader aspect of just ensuring there is adequate financing for fertility services and also ensuring that the cost of these fertility services are lower. And so the investor health coverage agenda must be part of our laws and healthcare financing to ensure that there is adequate resources for fertility to be good as well. I, yes. Sorry, I just wanted to add one thing. Yes, we have to have stiffer sentences. We have Domestic Violence Act and everything. But that alone doesn't change behavior. We need behavior change together with, yeah, to enforce it together with stiffer sentences. Right.